What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. Last week in the stock market, we saw a strong bounce off of the lows and now the bulls are facing a critical test. Will the bulls take back control of this market? First up, let's take a look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right, first things first, I just released the Stocks Channel Discord members only video and it is very time sensitive. So if you're a Discord member, be sure to watch it immediately. And in my opinion, this members video alone is worth the cost of being a Discord member. So if you haven't checked out the Discord server yet, but you've been thinking about it, this is a great opportunity to not only get access to the members only a video, but also access to all of my intraday updates and technical analysis, as well as my trade ideas. If you're interested in joining the Discord server, you can find out how to do that by simply clicking on the link in the description of this video. All right, so looking at SPY, we were up 0.9% on Friday and we did gap up after we had those big tech earnings and the PCE data. And one thing I wanna remind you, the PCE data came in a little hotter than expected and we still saw a bull rally on Friday. So that's just another reminder, you need to follow price action because following these data reports, it's very easy to see a hot PCE data and think you should have been shorting the market but if you shorted the market on Friday you had a bad time so remember that's what I'm teaching you to do is following price and managing risk around these levels and right now if we look at spy we're at an extremely critical test for the bulls because we are still in a downtrend of lower highs and lower lows even though in the very short term we just put in a higher low and now we have that higher high breakout but it's also within a medium term downtrend if we cannot break back above this critical resistance right around spy 510 so I do believe this is a very very simple market to trade and I went into great detail in the members only video of exactly what you should do in both the bear and bull scenarios on how to trade this market but really what it's going to come down to is following price at this resistance at 510 and if we break 510 the bulls need to break through 513 above 513 it's looking like the bulls are back on parade and they're going to continue pushing higher however you cannot rule out the bears quite yet because we'd have no proof we've broken through that resistance and we also have another gap to fill now at 504 so if we get rejected from 510, definitely look for that gap fill, even though we do have the breakout of support between 506 and 507. And if we can't hold 504, you still need to watch this support trend line right around 500 and the previous low at 497. If we break the previous low, then you can easily get bearish because we're likely going lower and we're going through a deeper correction. So as I always tell you, I think both bears and bulls are doing very well in this market, assuming they're disciplined traders, because there has been so many opportunities to go long and go short. And this is why I love volatile markets. And this is why if you're in the Discord server, you notice I've been doing a lot more day trading, which simply means I go to cash overnight and then I look for opportunities intraday instead of focusing more on swing trading. Now I am still accumulating swing trade ideas and if you're in the Discord server, I've been talking about which ones I'm accumulating, but I still think these market conditions are very profitable for day trading, so I'm still going to continue doing a lot of both. So focus on those resistance and support levels and I think you're going to do just fine. And remember to watch that members video and start working on your trade plans now. Over the weekend, is the perfect time to build those trade plans while you have no distractions and you could get some quiet time without the market volatility. If you wait until the market is open to start working on those trade plans, you're going to be a lot more emotional and you're not going to have a solid plan going into this volatile week ahead. We have a lot of big tech earnings and we still have more data dropping this week. So you want to have those trade plans ready ahead of time. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 1.54% on Friday and we did get a bull breakout because we did break above 429 and we're back up here near this resistance between 432 and 434. This is a very critical resistance zone and once more we did gap up so we have another gap to fill at 425. So if the bears are going to reject the bulls from this resistance zone, we are looking for that gap to fill at 425 and a support zone right around 423. If we break below that, we need to hold the low at 418 and if we can't do that, we still have a gap to fill down here at 407. So one once more, I will remind you, this is a very volatile market where both bears and bulls are going to do very well, assuming they're prepared for anything. And when I say prepared for anything, I mean, you should understand there is a bull scenario where we blast through resistance and go higher. And then there's the bear scenario where we eject this resistance and go much lower. And as I teach you to do, be prepared for both scenarios, follow the price action and let the price action do all the talking. That means we couldn't care less if we get the bull or bear scenario because we're unbiased objective price action traders. And that is what I am teaching you to do always while managing managing a risk around the critical levels. It doesn't matter if you want to short or go long, you need a plan on where you're going to manage your risk if you're wrong. And obviously if you're right, the reward is going to offset the amount of times that you lose because you're going
going to set up your trades where you have more reward than you have risk. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.36% on Friday and we did fully close the gap at 383. But as you can see, the Dow Jones did not break out to the higher high that we saw in SPY and the triple Qs. And I still think there's a good chance that it will. And that is going to be the break above 385 and then the push towards 391 in the gap fill below 395. So if you have any excuse to be bullish, it's that the Dow Jones is lagging behind and about to go on a nice face ripping rally to catch up to the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Doesn't mean it has to, but it's definitely a strong correlation here. So watch that level at 385. There's a good chance we break above it and get a nice little bull rally. If the bears take over control, we'll fail to break 385, come down here and test support at 377, break it once and for all after multiple attempts. And then below 377, we're looking for a strong push down to 370. As you can tell from the commentary, I prefer the bull scenario. And I do think the Dow Jones is going higher next week. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we're up 0.96% on Friday. And just like I told you on the Dow Jones, we did not get the higher high breakout like we saw in SPY and triple Qs. That is going to be the break above 199 and then the strong push higher towards the gap fill at 204. So I do think the Dow Jones and the small caps could be lagging behind and about to go on a very nice rally. But as always, manage your risk at 199. And if we can't break above 199, there's really no reason to get bullish. But there's a lot of reasons to get bullish if we break above 199. So watch that level closely and you can also stay bull above 196 or 193. And 193, I do think you should be bullish on small caps because it's very simple to get risk off below it. Below 193, we'll be looking for the 200 daily moving average at 190. On the RK ETF, we're up 1.05% on Friday and we did break back above 44. So this is a closing breakout higher high. And that's also why I do think we're going to see the same thing in the small caps. So I am looking for RK to push higher towards 45.7 next. If we can't hold 44, we come back down to 42.4. And if we break below that, we need to hold the low at 42. And if we can't hold the low at 42, we come down to 41 and then 40. On the VIX, we were down 2.34% on Friday. And we have another direct hit with the arrow, which is that the VIX would come down to 15. And it's really a matter of whether or not the bulls are are going to break through resistance or the bears are going to reject the bulls on whether or not the VIX bounces off 15 or crushes below it. If the VIX crushes below 15, I'm looking for a push down towards 12.8. And if the VIX bounces from 15, I'll be looking for a push back higher towards 17 to 18. I think at this point, the price action on the indices is far more important than the VIX because by the time the VIX does what we expect to see, we're already going to have seen it in the indices on the price action anyway. Now I do like the VIX as an indicator. I just simply don't think it's going to be that useful this week. On Bitcoin, we're currently trading just above 63,000. And I still will remind you, I have this bouncer die level at 61,000 because if at any point price action breaks below that support, I think it's a straight line flush to 52,000. However, there's still the opportunity. This is a higher low. And I will admit this chart looks very bearish with all of the lower high rejections, but it could change very quickly if we get a higher low breakout and a break to a higher high above 67,000. So if you want a confirmation of a bull breakout, that's going to be above 67,000. And the confirmation of the bear breakdown is going to be below 61,000. On Nvidia stock, we're up 6.18% on Friday. And as you can very clearly, clearly see we had the bull breakout above the downtrending resistance and we did get the higher low into a higher high so this is an extremely bullish structure on a market moving name and it's not just a market moving name it is the market moving name and as you can tell from the arrow i was looking to buy the dip as we approach the support zone into a push to a brand new all-time high between 994 and 1032. i see no reason to change that prediction but in the short term we need to hold this breakout at 857 so stay bull above 857 and if we can't hold above 857 we need to hold above 823 and if we can't hold above 823 then i'm likely wrong and we're going lower which would be the gap fill down here towards 689 or a retest of support between 740 and 780. on tesla stock we were down one point 1% on Friday. And you can see this prediction that I had before earnings of the V-shaped recovery is largely played out because we got very close to the price target at 173. And yes, we could continue to push a bit higher towards 175. But as you know, greedy pigs get slaughtered. And if you've already made a lot of profits, there's no reason you shouldn't be locking some of them in. And in the short term, if we start to pull back, we simply need to hold above 160 to 153. And if we can't hold 153, then we're going to retrace a lot of the after earnings profits. And we're going to likely come back down into the 140s. So there's your V-shaped recovery. I predicted it before I ever knew a damn thing about earnings and I didn't care if earnings was good or bad, but this was simply just a technical pattern that we've seen many times on Tesla capitulation. On Apple stock, we were down 0.35% on Friday and we did get up to that resistance zone right around 171.5 and we did reject it and come back down to support at 169. So as long as we could hold above 169 to 167, it's possible for a higher low going into earnings. And I do believe Apple is about to go on a face ripping rally off of these lows. This is a blue chip name that had a full blown 17% correction within a bull market so it's very easy for me to catch this falling knife it's also very easy for me to manage my risk so i'm going to do that 11 times out of 10. if you don't want to buy a falling knife we need a higher low 
higher high breakout and we need to get back above this negatively sloping 50 EMA, which is going to require us to break back above about 172 to 174. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this should be a very exciting week because we have a critical test of resistance for the bulls. We have plenty of more big tech earnings and we get unemployment data on Friday and all of these are major catalysts for a very volatile market to make very volatile moves, which is great for us day traders. It's going to give us great opportunities to set up low risk, high reward swing trade entries as well. So there's something in this market for every single trader. If you want access to all of my intraday updates and technical analysis, as well as my trade ideas, then you need to join the Stocks Channel Discord server and you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.